Hi everyone, I just wanted to show you what you will need for this abstraction process and class. I am just going to run through the materials so that you know what you will need in order to participate. You will need some acrylic paint, your favorite colors, but I do suggest that you have the basics of primary yellow, primary red, and maybe a primary blue or a phthalo blue so that you have the primary colors. For the particular exercise I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be needing all three, the primary colors. So some acrylic paints will be essential. That is what we're going to be painting with. You're going to need some square brushes. Um, it needs to be big enough so that you can not focus so much on detail and a square brush can help you create interesting shapes so i want to limit the brushes that you have access to for this particular exercise uh, because it is all about abstraction then you're going to need maybe some scissors and a sheet of paper that you can create a viewfinder on if you already have a viewfinder you can pull that out and use that uh, I'm going to show you how to make your own viewfinder for this exercise. I'm just using some ordinary copy paper and a pair of scissors, paper scissors. You will need a pencil and a ruler. And this is for music. <laughs> music is always essential. Okay. So then I just have a kitchen towel, I have a palette where I will dispense my paint on, I have my cell phone with an image on that I want to work on, I'm going to show you digital and practical, you will need some masking tapes as well um, for this exercise, let me just put my viewfinder aside for now. You're going to need an image or you are welcome to use the one that I'm providing with this class. This is a photograph that I personally took in Bali and I used an AI intelligence um, dream AI uh, on the internet. I will provide a link to that if you want to play with that and see what you can do. Um, or you can also use uh, an app called Paint. Um, so the idea is that you take a photograph, you use a particular style and then this um, uh, software basically merges the style and your photograph and that gives you already a very nice abstraction with brighter colors to play with uh, to begin this entire journey into abstraction with. We will not be painting this painting exactly. We will be zooming in on some areas and that is where you will need a viewfinder and in this class I'm going to show you how you can find interesting little zones that we will be painting. So get your equipment and your materials and your paints and your brushes. Uh, I'm also just working on a, a canvas a paper uh, for this exercise so it really doesn't have to be expensive. Um, I'm just dividing it into four grids so you have four equal portions that you can do this exercise on so I won't get into much more than that that's what you will need for this class so meet me in the next section when I show you how we're going to be using these tools to begin our journey into abstract painting so I will see you right now Right, I wanted to just come and show you how you can create your own viewfinder uh, that you will need in order to select or isolate a particular zone on your photograph or on this image. So it is really simple. I just used an ordinary sheet of uh, copy paper. It doesn't have to be an expensive exercise, but if you want to create something 
more durable you can go to uh, art framing store and you can ask them to um, cut some mounting boards for you in the same way and then you know they are of good quality you can use them time and time again so obviously the bigger your canvas um, is that you will work on the bigger your viewfinder need to be uh, not necessarily because you can you know work from a photograph and then have it blown up so what I'm doing now is I'm just measuring basically four centimeters from the edge um, and then I'm going to also measure four centimeters from the portrait or landscape side as well. Sorry, the other one was portrait, now it's landscape. Forgive me. And then I'm just going to connect the dots. It doesn't have to be rocket science. Basically, just give yourself a basic. Uh, frame that's the same with width and um, height so I'm just trying to see if I'm fairly straight <laughs> it would be helpful to be accurate but it is not the end of the world if it's not precise okay so once you have uh, that little frame mapped out you know that um, one of these will be uh, one of the L shapes and the other one as well. So I like to make it just easy for myself so that I don't cut too far, just to know which one is which one. So this one will go all the way and then the other one will go all the way. Alrighty, and then you just use an ordinary scissor. This is no rocket science. But I would like to show you how I created mine. You can even cut this on a, a gelatine if you have one. Um, you could maybe make it a little bit more accurate than me. So forgive me, I'm not the world's straightest cutter. <laughs> In fact, I'm not straight at all. But anyway, so let's just try our best here. We are not striving for perfection, we are striving for good enough. For me, because if it's good enough for you, then that's good enough for you. Okay, so we have one there. Now we continue with the other one. So we're basically removing the center and cutting two of these sections to crisscross over each other like you will see me do in the next episode when we start to make use of this tool please forgive my playful neighbors it is school holiday in my area here in South Africa and the kids are having fun outside so I don't want to um, there we go so we have our two viewfinders you can now see you can crop basically any square if you turn it that way or that way <laughs> I'm confusing myself. Here we go. So this is adequate for this exercise because you really need to find a little space on your um, photograph that's really no bigger than two centimeters by two centimeters for now. But even later, if you want to do a little bit of a portrait or a landscape, you can select a fairly big part on the image that's what it's about so just make your viewfinder in relation to the image that you have printed um, in order to ensure that your arms cross um, over each other so that you can isolate an area of your photograph so go ahead make your viewfinder 
and uh, print out the image that I've provided. If you can't find it, just um, message me and I will send it directly to you. And uh, all you also welcome, of course, to use your own photograph for the same exercise. So I will see you guys in the next episode when we use this little tool to find some interesting spaces on our photograph. I'll see you there.